Good morning. Glad that the wind blew you all in today. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> we have uh, good news that the endowment committee has re uh, approved a request for new equipment. So we're going to get a new camera with a new lens that will be back in the balcony. Yay! And I don't know, should we get rid of this light? Should we put the light bar back up where it belongs? Okay, we can do that too. And um, then eventually we'll be able to live stream. And so instead of recording worship and then uploading it onto our Facebook page, we can do it at the same time we're having worship. So anyway, the endowment committee uh, were very generous in granting our request, plus some, and we're very thankful. Uh, I'm thankful for the endowment committee and for all of you that have contributed to the endowment committee over the years to make this new ministry of improving our online presence. Our church conference uh, will be Saturday, the 28th of November at 5 p.m. It'll be on Zoom and in person here at the church with social distancing. That's our yearly church conference. And those of you that uh, received an email about your report, I'm sure you will get those in to Linda as soon as possible or you're gonna be, she's gonna be calling you. So best to have it already done. So just saying, all right. I'm glad everybody's here today so that we can worship God through Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Come, share the joy of the Lord. Delight in God's goodness. We come to praise God who gives each person a special gift to be nurtured and shared. We praise God for the gifts and for opportunities of, for service that they represent. Come, let us worship God who entrusts us with so much.
Honey, I like your mask. It has your name on it, huh? Yeah. What's that? Your grandma did it? Oh, your aunt did it. Oh, okay. She's pretty good, isn't she? Yeah, she is. Well, when I was growing up, my grandfather always wanted us to collect coins, my sister and I. And I have a few still, but I never did love it as much as he did. Although I love collecting and spending money. You like spending money? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, in a little bit, um, we're going to hear a story about, G about a story Jesus told about a man. And he was going to go on a little trip. So he met with his servants, and he decided to give, to give his servants control of his money while he was gone on his trip. Take care of everything, he said. And he gave them gold coins. And to the first, the first slave, he gave five gold coins. And he told him to take care of them. And to the second slave, he gave two coins. And to the third slave, he gave one coin. So the master was gone for a long time. And when he came back, he said, what did you do with that gold that I gave you? Well, the first servant said, I took those five gold coins that you gave me, and I made five more. One, two, three, four, five. Look at that. So he had ten. And he gave them to the master. And the master said, well, that was a really nice job. So then the servant that he gave two coins to, he also used them to make two more coins. So he had four coins. And the master said, what an excellent job you've done. Well, the last slave, he was afraid. He was afraid he might lose his one coin or he might do something wrong with it. So he went in the backyard and he buried it. Well, of course, when he, when he brought it back, it was all kind of yucky. And he gave it to the master and he said, why didn't you make more gold for me with this? So he got, kind of got in trouble. So, you know, Jesus tells us stories and they don't always appear to be what they are on the surface. So what this story was really about was, I don't know, do you think God wants us to make a lot of money? Yeah. Okay, it could be, because some people do make a lot of money. Or maybe Jesus was talking about something else. Oh, yes, dear, what do you think Jesus is talking about? I, I think that he was talking about that if you don't make money, it's okay. If you don't make money, it's okay. However, what isn't okay is if God gives us something that we need to share it. So like Brynn here, she plays the piano really well and she shares it with us. And Bunku and Grace and Dana, they sing really well and they share it with everyone. And I like to talk a lot, so I share that with everybody. So whatever God gives us, we're supposed to take it and then use it to make good things for other people. So now I'm going to give you some of these gold coins that are on the altar here. And I want you to take them and of course you're going to want to eat some of them, aren't you? Because you know they're not really gold. They got candy in them. You knew that, didn't you? You bought them from a store before? Yeah, that's where I got these. Yeah. And so anyway, I want you to take as many as you want of the ones you can eat, and I want you to do something good with them. Okay? So you decide. So come up here and get something. And as soon as you get them, we'll pray a little bit. As many as you want. All right, let's pray. Wait, don't, don't go right away yet. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we ask that you bless us again and again with our gifts, with these. Yeah, you want God to bless you? Yes, God's going to bless us and bless these coins and do something good. Amen? Amen. All right.
now let us enter into a time of silent prayer. Lord of generosity, you bless us with the gifts that are uniquely our own. We long to use the talents you bestow upon us to build your kingdom. Often, our longing is short-circuited by desires that benefit us personally rather than your kingdom. Fear creeps in and convincing us the scarcity of resources rather than the abundance. And we are then reluctant to share what you have given us. Mistrust gets a hold of our minds and we doubt whether those making decisions know what they're doing. Overwhelmed by loss and change, we shut down and ignore all that we have. Guide us to live in gratitude for all you have done for us and the opportunities that you place before us. Clear our vision and help us to see the good we can do with the gifts and talents we have received. As your faithful servants, we offer our prayers up to you to intercede in the lives of all those who are suffering from COVID in our world, our nation, our state, and our city. And we pray for Kelly Schweda and Rochelle and Cody Horkin as they, and Carlotta Harrington as they battle this virus. And we pray for Laura Evans that her pain be, and her back be healed. We pray for Kimber Shepherd as she recovers from her car accident and are so thankful that she made it through a terrible ordeal. We pray for the family of Nancy Lawrence as they grieve the loss of their beloved mother. And we know, Lord, that she is now with you. We praise you for the gifts you have given the medical professionals in caring for those who are in the midst of any illness, including the pandemic. And we pray for the safety, endurance, and compassion of all those who give care on the front lines. In a nation that is politically divided, we pray for civility, understanding, and grace in our leaders. For all those experiencing natural disaster in the aftermath, we ask your blessing on the recovery efforts. All our prayers are lifted to you, God of grace and love, as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
the parable of the talents from the Gospel of Matthew. For it as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, one, each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled the accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and I hid your talent in the ground. Here, have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Yes. Good morning. Good to see you. We are all the people with whom God is so pleased. We are standing on a holy ground, and we are so blessed to have worship together in this beautiful sanctuary. Today, we read a very interesting parable, another very interesting, interesting parable of Jesus Christ. Uh, according to this parable, I think we are supposed to be very good. We are supposed to be very good at investing, investing money, right? What do you think? When I read this parable, the metaphor, the symbol of a journey, the concept of a journey stood out to me. Jesus talks about having a journey, oftentimes. In his parables, the Lord Jesus talked about people who were having a journey, who were traveling. In the parable of the tenants in the vineyard, the landowner plants a vineyard, puts a fence around it, digs a hole for the wine press, and builds a watchtower. Then the owner leaves home, leaves home and goes on a trip. In the parable of a prodigal son, the younger son asks his father for his share of his property while 
His father is still alive. What a horrible son he is. What would you react if, we, if your son claims your property even when you are still alive? But the good father gave the son the half of his property, and the younger son took the property and sold it out and took the money and had a journey, left home to go a country far away. In the parable of the Good Samaritan, a man goes down from Jerusalem to Jericho and he was attacked by robbers. He was beaten up, he was stri uh, stripped off, and he was left half dead. And then a priest happened to go down the same road, and then a Levite, and then a Samaritan happened to be traveling around there. So likewise, Jesus oftentimes used the metaphor of a journey. People are having a journey, traveling around. Today, the master decides to travel, to have a trip. So he calls his servants and entrusts his wealth to them. When the master has a journey, the servants come to have a journey too, a new journey without master. Likewise, we all have a journey in this world. When we get separated from God, we begin to have begin to have our own journey. Life is often compared to a journey. We all came from God and we will, we will go back to God. And in between them, there is a journey in this world. When we get separated from God, there begins our own journey. And at the same time, there begins our master's journey too. God is watching over us. God is taking care of us. God has a plan for our own journey. So, although it looks like we have our own journey when we get separated from God, nothing can separate us from our Lord. We have a journey with our God, with God's plan, and with God's promise, and with God's blessings, and with Master's happiness. We have the journey with Master's happiness. So in today's scripture, in Matthew 25, 21, the Bible says, enter into the joy of your Master. In another, in another version of the Bible, it says, Come and share your master's happiness. Come and share your master's happiness. Do you know the purpose of your journey? If there is a journey, there should be a purpose, a goal, and there should be a destination. Can you imagine a journey without purpose? without destination? Have you, ever gone out? Have you ever gone outside without purpose, without destination? You feel like you want to do something, you want to enjoy the leisure, your free time, but you cannot find anything that you really want to do. Then you just go outside without destination, without purpose. Then how did you feel? Did you remember the funny feeling when you went outside without purpose, without destination, looking for something? So, do you know the purpose of your journey in this world? The destination of your journey? If you don't, you might live your life with that funny feeling you had when you got outside without destination, without purpose. Today the Bible says, come and share your master's happiness. 
I believe that's our purpose of a journey. Share, come and share your master's happiness. God wants us to be happy. Today, the Bible says, God, uh, come and share your master's happiness. We are all the people with whom God is so pleased. Why are we here? Because God so loved us. We are not accidental beings. We are here because of the love of God, because of the power of God. Today, the master calls his servants before going on a trip, and he gives his property to them, trusting them. To one, he gives five talents, to another one, another one, two talents, and still to another one, one talent. Here, talent means a measure of gold, an amount of gold. According to the annotation, a talent is worth roughly around a day laborer's wage, 20 years, 20 years of a day laborer's wage. Can you calculate it? How much would it worth, one talent? I calculated it. I think it's worth at least half a million dollars, one talent. Can you imagine? One talent is half, at least half a million dollars. So five talents. Five talents wor is worth two and a half million dollars, right? And two talents is worth one million dollars. And one talent is worth a half million dollars. That's the money the master is giving to his servants. That's the money I think we have. That's the, that's the things we have which is worth that. We have a journey. To have a journey, there should be a purpose. There should be a destination. What else do we need? We need the money, right? To take, on, to take on a trip, we need money. We need the resources. We need the resources for the trip. What are your resources for your trip? And where does it come from? The Bible tells us that all the resources come from God. God provides. And God provides what we need for us, everything, and more than enough. Sometimes, Jesus is beyond our imagination. Can you imagine? Who were the audiences of Jesus Christ at the time of Jesus? Who were the audiences? Usually, they were sick people and poor people and uneducated and marginalized people. To them, to those people, Jesus says, you all have a journey in this world and God pays for the trip. God pays for you. For one, two and a half million dollars. For another, one million dollars. And still another, a half million dollars. You all have that money. Listen, you have the money more than enough. Jesus is telling those poor, sick people. Hearing the word of Jesus, people would think, what is he talking about? Some would think, wow, do we have that amount of money? Is he planning to give that money to us? That's wonderful. That's great. And then Jesus keeps saying, you know what? The master, the master will come again and settle the accounts with them. The one who was given two and a half million dollars will give back to the master another two and a half million dollars. The one who was given two million dollars will give back to the master another two million dollars. Uh, another one million dollars, right? <laughs> yes. Two talents is worth two, uh, one million dollars. Wow, huge money to, to calculate. And the one who was given one talent will give back to the master Another half a million dollars. This is what Jesus is saying. This is what Jesus is telling 
to those people. Then the master says to him, Oh, but, but what happened? <laughs> what happened was the one who was given half a million dollars, he just gave back the same amount to the master because he did nothing. He uh, dig the ground, he hid the money in the ground because he feared losing it, right? It's being money. Then the master says to him, you wicked and lazy slave, if you have feared investing and working the money, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So how do you think they listened to this teaching of Jesus through the parable? How do you listen to this parable? What do we have? What do we do with what we have? Jesus says, you have it. You use it. But many people say, we cannot do it. We don't have it. Moses said, Lord, I cannot do that. I don't have it. I am very slow of speech and tongue. Paul said, Lord, who are you? The Lord said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goals. You cannot reject my call. You have it. Matthew was a tax collector. Peter was just a fisherman. But Jesus said to them, Follow me. I will make you a new kind of fisherman for people, catching people for spreading the gospel. What do we have? Can we do it? We cannot do it if, if it does not come from God. We don't have it if it does not come from God. But if, 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 if it comes from God, we have it. We have it more than enough. The more we use it, the more we share it together, the more we will have it, the more we return to God. That's what God wants from us. People want to retire as early as they can. Why? Maybe because they think they can travel around the world doing whatever they want without work. But you know what? We already have a journey. We are always having a journey in this world with God, a beautiful journey. Why is our work so hard and so burdensome, so painful? Why is our work is so difficult? Because we have the journey without our Lord, without, our, without the purpose, without knowing the destination. But imagine, we are not working. Imagine we are not working. God is working for us and with us. So today the Bible says, come and share you, your master's happiness. Jesus didn't say, oh, you work on your own things. No, Jesus says, come and share your master's happiness. What is our work? Our work is nothing. We cannot deal with that tremendous thing, that serious thing that, trust, that was trusted and trust to us. We cannot deal with that. We are nothing. We cannot work without the Lord. Our ability is nothing. All we can do is accept God's call and participate in the work of God, the work of faith and the work of heaven. In Romans 11.32, St. Paul says, All the depth of the riches of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgment and his path beyond tracing out. If we believe that God provides everything we need, that everything is God's possession, our work will not be hard or burdensome or painful. 
Rather, our work will be the work of heaven and the joy of heaven. Because God is working for us. We are participating. We are entering into the joy of our master. Peter and John were going up to the temple one day for prayer. For prayer. There was a man who was lame from, from birth, begging for money. Then Peter said to him, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. Walk. And then the man jumped to his, to his feet and began to walk, praising God our Lord. We are not saved by our works. We are saved by our faith, only by our faith. But if, but if we really believe in God, if we really have faith in God, God will work with us. God's work will be done and revealed in us and through us. That is the work of faith. How can you make two million more dollars? How can we make three more million dollars? We cannot do that. It would be just fortunate if we don't waste it, the money, as the prodigal son did. But if we work in faith with God, then we know that we have more than two million dollars, more than even ten million dollars. Who is richer than God? Who is mightier than God? We have the love of God, the power of God in our hearts. That's what it means when Jesus talked about talents, the tremendous money, the tremendous serious things. That's the love of God, the power of God in our hearts. Is anything too difficult for the Lord? Trust God. Let us trust our Lord. What do we have? We have a faith. We have a faith in God in our hearts. We have the love of God and the power of God. If we, if we think that all we have comes from our own ability, if we think that we ourselves are doing our own work, then we will always live in fear and anxiety. We will want to stop it as soon as possible. We would want to quit it. We want to give up whenever, whenever possible. But if we know that we have everything in God, that God is working for us, if we see, if we see the work of God, the joy of heaven in our daily living, there is nothing to fear, nothing to worry about. We are joining to the Master's happiness every day. This is the work of faith. Then it will always increase, and we will have more, have more, always abundantly, more than enough. Our faith, our joy, the power of God, the love of God will never decrease by using it because it will always increase by sharing it together, by using it together. That is why the Bible says to us in Matthew 25, 29, for to all those who have, more will be given and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. If you don't know, if you don't know what you have, which is the love of God and the power of God in your hearts, if you dig it in, in the ground, if you disregard it, it will, dis it will decrease, it will disappear. Like a lazy slave, wicked lazy slave. You will lose it, even what you think you have, because you didn't think about it. You don't know what you have, because you don't have a faith. You will have even your possessions, even what you have in fear and anxiety, and you will eventually lose it. But thanks be to God, we are the people of faith and people of God. We know where we came from, and where we are going. And we have a journey with God. 
And every day, we listen to the call of God. We listen to God's calling. Come and share your master's happiness. We will join the master's happiness every day, abundantly, more than enough, and increase it and spread it to the world with God every day. Amen. Offertory prayer. Lord, you have given to us all that we have and all that we are, our strengths and our weaknesses, our abilities to be teachers, students with many questions, nurses, doctors, lawyers, homemakers, musicians, pastors, and ministers of faith. Embolden us not to hide our gifts away but rather to share graciously and abundantly with all of those around us, both near and far. Amen.
See what you have. We have everything, more than enough. The depth of the riches of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable the Lord's judgment. Listen to the call, the call to a heaven-bound journey, the call to a spiritual journey. And we have everything we need. Join and share and spread the Master's happiness. God is working with us and for us. Amen.